In this tutorial, you will learn how to install the Unify Network Controller on a Linux Ubuntu 22.04 LTS server. So having a great network with a single point of control for network devices is important. It also allows you to orchestrate and implement organization-specific policies with ease and efficiency. It is also a solution that works best for multiple network devices spread across multiple office locations. The Unify Network Controller is a network management software solution from Ubiquity Networks. It allows you to configure and control your network from adopting and setting up wireless access points, configuring core network functionality such as DNS and DHCP, to setting up VPN links as well as advanced and network level functionality such as radio servers. So I've also prepared a diagram that will actually depict what we're actually trying to achieve here. So we're going to have a single cloud-hosted Unify Network Controller deployed on the Amazon EC2 service. And that can then be used to, multi to control uh, multiple Unify access points uh, spread across uh, multiple uh, different physical locations. So sign into your Amazon account, and then I'm just going to quickly show you how to first create the Linux Ubuntu instance. So on the Amazon dashboard, simply search for EC2 and then click on the EC2 search result. Click on where it says uh, launch instance, and this should then open up the new EC2 launch experience. So once the, once the wizard opens up, the next thing you need to do is to give an, the instance a name. So we're just going to call this instance uh, Unify uh, Network Controller. So once you've actually typed in a descriptive name for your instance, scroll down and then click on where it says browse more AMIs. Click on the marketplace AMIs tab, and then we're going to run a search for Ubuntu. Well, let me just say Ubuntu Jammy. And then on the return search results, click on the Ubuntu 22.04 LTS uh, search result. Just click on select. And then what you now need to do is to click on continue. So you should now be returned to the wizard. And then you now need to set an instance type. So we're going to set the instance type to uh, t2.micro which is actually free tier eligible. And then I'm then going to create a key pair file that I'll actually use to connect to the instance via SSH. You can either set the file format for the private key file to PPK or .pem. So depending on your platform, you can just choose what works best for you and then click on the create key pair button. So you just need to download that key pair file. And then I'm actually going to uh, set that uh, to allow uh, HTTPS and HTTP traffic. And then I'm also then going to configure the storage on for the instance to uh, 50 gigs. And then once you've made these selections, you just need to then click on the launch instance button. I'd usually recommend to leave the advanced uh, details as they are, as you usually don't have to change much there. So as you can see, the instance is actually now being deployed on the Amazon EC2 service. So once it's actually been deployed, we're then going to create an A record that actually points to this newly created uh, instance. So what I need you to do is to click on the instance ID and then copy the public IPv4 address for this instance. So you now need to run a search for root 53 and then click on the returned root 53 search result. So you now need to click on where it says hosted zones and then you need to click on any one hosted zone for your registered domain names. So once you've clicked on there, click on the create record button. So I'm just going to set the record name to unify uh, server. And then on the value field, I'm just going to paste in the public IPv4 address for the instance. So just click on the create record so that all of these changes will actually take effect. So next, I'm then going to return to the instances uh, EC2 uh, dashboard and then click on the instance ID for your Unify uh, Ubuntu server. Click on where it says connect and then click on the SSH client uh, tab. So you need to copy the connection URL and open up your SSH uh, terminal program. So I'm just going to change my working directory to the downloads directory. And then I'm just going to set the key pair file that I actually downloaded to read only. And then I'm just going to paste in the connection URL that was actually supplied to me that I actually copied from the Amazon uh, EC2 uh, dashboard. So as you can see, I've actually successfully connected to the instance via SSH. So I'm just going to change to the root user now. 
And then the first thing that I'm going to do is to set a custom host name. So type hostname CTL, set hostname, and then I'm just going to set the hostname to Unify Server. So I'm just going to set that to Unify Server. And then you now need to also edit the default host configuration file for the Ubuntu server. So in this configuration file, you need to add the entry 127.0.0.1 and then type in unifyserver.yourdomainname.com and then type in unify server at the end. And then the other change you need to do is you need to edit the uh, cloud.cfg file, which is in the etc cloud directory. So let me just touch, list out the files in this directory. And then I'm just going to type in nano cloud.cfg. So in this configuration file, we're then going to set the preserve hosting parameter to true. So it's important that you do this so that the custom hosting that you've set will actually persist across reboots. So once you've made the change, you now need to actually reboot the instance so that all of the changes we've made will actually take effect. In the next step, we're then going to actually install the Unify Network Controller. To do this, we're going to use Portainer, and then I'm actually going to uh, uh, use Docker as well to uh, set up the Unify uh, Network Controller. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reconnect to the server instance, and then I'm just going to uh, actually I actually I was actually trying to create a volume, but I hadn't uh, installed Docker. So um, just run the command apt install docker. So once you've uh, run the installation there, it's actually docker.io there. Type in yes and press end. So as you can see, we're actually now installing the docker software on the Ubuntu server. So once you've completed the installation, you now need to then create a, a volume for the portainer system. So just type in docker volume create portainer underscore data or any other name that you'd like to uh, give that. And then you then need to also paste in that uh, command to actually deploy the Portena Docker image. So once you've completed that deployment, I'm just going to run the Docker PS command just to check if the Portena uh, instance is actually running. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a modification to the security group for the instance Actually, I'm going to be editing the inbound rules for the for the security group, and then I'm actually I'm just going to be opening up uh, port uh, eight four four three, and then I'm going to allow traffic from anywhere to that port. I'm also then going to open up uh, uh, custom TCP port nine four four three, and then click on the save uh, roles button. So this will allow us to connect to the instance on those two ports. So I'm just going to now log into the Portainer web-based uh, dashboard. So you need to type in your domain name or your custom URL that is actually pointing to the Linux Ubuntu instance and then appoint, uh, append the 9443 port. All right, so since this is a new Portainer installation, I'm just going to set my password there. And then you, you, now, you just need to retype your password on the confirm password field and then click on the create user button. So Portena, the Portena system is actually now creating the admin user which will actually use to log into the system. So once you've done that, you then need to click on the get started uh, link or button and then click on the uh, local uh, 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 instance or environment that is actually listed up there. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to deploy a um, co another container actually. So it's like we're going to be using a container uh, container to deploy another container, which is kind of ironic actually. So um, click on the add container button, and then we're just going to set the name for that container to unify controller. So I'm just going to set that to unify network controller actually. And then on the uh, image section, I'm, there, I'm just going to run another Google search for Unify um, Controller Docker. So I'm just going to say Unify Controller Docker or just Unify Docker actually. If you, so, so if you search that, you should, you, so you should see the search result that I'm actually, that I've actually opened up here. So you just need to copy the Docker pull command and then paste that in the image field. 
but then you need to remove the docker pull uh, section from the command because Potena is actually going to do that for you. So I'm just going to remove that uh, first part and then I'm going to publish a network port here. So we're just going to publish network port 8443 because that's the default port for the Unify network controller. And then click on where it says uh, restart policy and then I'm just going to set the policy to always. So click on the deploy container button for us to actually set up the Unify network controller uh, container. But then I think there's an issue with the name that I actually gave this uh, container. So I'm just going to edit the name there. I think it doesn't like spaces there. So I'm just going to remove the spaces and then click on the deploy container uh, button once again. So as you can see, we've now successfully deployed the Unify uh, network controller container on the Linux Ubuntu server using a Portainer web-based web uh, dashboard system. So I'm now going to connect to the um, Unify management dashboard here. So you just type in your URL and append the 8443 port number at the end there. So you just need to, if you get a connection, it's not private error message. You just need to look for a link that actually allows you to proceed with the connection. So this is the well-known uh, Unify uh, startup uh, configuration. So I'm just going to set the uh, name for the controller actually, and then click on next. So I'm just going to switch to advanced and then I'm going to disable or enable remote access as well as uh, let me see let me just uh, enable remote access there all right so i'm just going to type in my username so i'm just just going to type then um, let me just set that to administrator actually so just type in administrator or any other username that you'd like and then you then need to also set your own custom administrator password so you need to make sure you type in something that you will remember or you need to save your password your username and your password somewhere because this is sort of like the uh, Unify master user account or administrator account that we're actually creating here. So you need to type in an administrator password there and then click on where it says uh, 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 local administrator email. So I'm just going to type in my email address that I usually use for installations like this and then click on next. So I'm um, just going to save the password there but then it's now asking me to sign into my Ubiquiti account. But I don't want to do that for now. So I'm just going to disable the enable root access option and then click on next. So I'm just going to enable auto backup as well and then just click on next. So we need to create a Wi-Fi network actually. So I'm just going to set that to Wi-Fi name or any other name that you'd like, you can actually set it up there. And then combine 2G and 5G uh, networks and then click on next. So I'm just going to choose my country as well as my time zone and then click on finish. So yeah, if you've uh, installed the Unify Network Controller before, that's basically the setup that you uh, go through. But if this, the, if this is your first time, then uh, I'm sure this is also a learning experience for you uh, just to see how you can complete the Unify Controller setup on a Linux Ubuntu cloud hosted server actually. So um, as you can see, this is the controller that we've got and we currently don't have any Unify devices on the controller. If you click on settings, you can actually configure your Wi-Fi or if you click on system, you can actually choose to use the light or dark mode. So I'm just going to set that to dark because it looks a bit nicer actually. And then you can actually see that we're actually using the version 7.2.95, I think, of the Unify controller. That's the version that we've actually set up here. So that's been it, guys. That's a quick look at how you can set up the Unify uh, Network controller on a Linux Ubuntu cloud hosted server. I hope this tutorial has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.